Hey guys, Lart here. This will be a quick tutorial where we fix our AI character to actually animate when he's moving. Because right now you can see that he's just sliding across the floor. So let's go in the animation blueprint. And now we will be able to see what's the problem. So what happens is if we go to event graph, this is where we get the state of the character in terms of the movement. And you can see that walk right value and walk forward value we are getting from our third person character. Now, what are those values? Let's quickly remind ourselves. Remember, you can do Alt Shift O and then search for a particular asset. It's a really quick and nice way to navigate a project if you know how the asset is called. So here I am. And move forward axis values, components, attack. Let's see, let's see how were they called? Move right and move forward axis value. Okay, so here they are. I can just do find references and you can see that I'm setting it in the input axis. So the thing about AI is that of course AI is not, AI is not doing any input axis. So these things are only firing for the player. Now we could actually go ahead and keep our current logic here present because we still want to have a strafe and stuff for ourselves, but the walk forward value, we could actually uh, supplement with something else. So without removing logic, let's quickly add something else here, which will be the actual speed of the character. And the way that we do it is we go ahead and take this third person character and the way how the characters are moving in Unreal is via character movement component. So we can just go ahead and say get character movement. And if we scroll to the bottom, you can see that we can get the component reference. Now this component has a velocity, of course. So if we just go and ask, the velocity of course is a vector with direction and magnitude. So we take the length of the vector to get the magnitude. And let's just, for now, let's just print. So let's see what we are dealing with here. And of course, this will be printing every animation update or any animation tick. So here we are. Keep in mind, we have two guys here now, so it will be doing it twice. Let's only keep, keep ourselves here. So let's delete the other guy. So you can see it's zero, but it goes up to 600. Now, what is a 600? Well, 600 is um, speed in uh, centimeters per second. And the reason why it's exactly 600 is because if we go to the third person character, character movement, and we go to the walk, walking max walk speed is 600. So by default, without any extra configuration, the way how the character movement component works is that it gives you the walk walking state. So you're, you're using the walking movement type, kind of. And the acceleration is configured here. Um, let's see, it's max acceleration. Yeah. So this is uh, this is how 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 much, uh, well, how how fast this the the, the speed of your uh, of your movement can change. So if I put here something like, let's say 10 times or 100 times less, right? So 20.48. We're not changing the maximum speed. We're changing the way how you are increasing your speed. The rate with which, you, with which you can increase your speed, right? So of course we're not interested in this. So let's go back and let's keep it. Maybe let's do something slightly more like heavy. Now that's too heavy still. Let's put there like uh, 1536, I think that's the value. I mean, you can put any any uh, value in between. Uh, maybe it's still too slow. Okay, let's let's go back to default for now. Uh, but the reason why we're here is because we, we can, we now know that max walk speed actually determines the maximum speed of our movement. Now the way how input axis move forward works is that it can be from minus one to one, if I remember correctly. But now you can see that we have max, max um, walk speed to 600. And let's keep it there for now. But the reason why we are interested in this is because we can go ahead and right here in the blueprint in runtime, we can ask for max walk speed straight from this character moving component. 
Now, what if we divide the velocity uh, length by max walk speed? So if we do that and we do compile save and play, you can see that actually what happens is we are starting to get the values from 0 to 1. Now, because we're getting values from 0 to 1, it's kind of the same. As long as, long as we're going forward, it's the same as walk forward value, right? So let's go ahead and do this guy. And let's just connect this thing. Now, we still have a problem with walking back. We will tackle this later. But uh, you can see that for now, actually, we are solving our problem for using the actual movement speed instead of just input uh, value we're actually solving the, um, we're actually telling the animation blueprint our actual speed or rather relative speed you know relatively to our maximum speed and and the way how we can check this sorry if i'm sound <laughs> if i sound confusing so uh if i put here again small acceleration like 124 you can, well, actually, okay, let's do even less. Let's do something like 256, right? Let's see, yeah, so you can see what starts what starts happening. And what's different now is that when you're starting to walk, the legs are moving slower at first, and then they're moving faster and faster. Boom. So just like that. And the reason why it happens, why we, we got this effect now, is that if we are, let's see, we're using blend space, right? Mm, or do we? Are we actually using blend space? Let's see. Blueprint animation graph. We have all this logic here. Classic straight move. Okay, so that's the blend space, right? So this blend space works for values from zero to one in this particular case. So because it uses values from 0 to 1, we are actually now supplying it the intermediary values. So for example, when you're on half the speed of your max speed, you will be moving slower and your animation will be slower because it interpolates between standing animation and movement animation. So for example, if you're walking slowly, you can see there's this weird interpolation where you kind of steps slowly, but still it's, unless you're you know, accelerating really slowly, you will get more uh, smooth animation transitions because before this we were just saying okay you know if the button is pressed it's one if no button is pressed it's zero but now because we are using our speed we will have more smooth animations okay so actually that of course that's not the reason why we use this thing the real reason why we started working with um, actual speeds instead of just inputs is because now our other guy will have the same effect. So you can see that what happens now is that he also uh, sends his um, speed to the animation blueprint. And so now, because we have the same logic for him and for us, and this logic is not bound to our inputs, we both have our legs moving. And this is something that's in programming or in software design is called separation of concerns kind of, and generally that, that's always better approach. So the way how you could describe this best is that animation blueprint is designed to animate the character and you have to kind of um, separate it from, you know, particular player, for example, you know, player controlled by actual, you know, or, or character controlled by actual player as much as possible. So in this case, we're doing that we are not paying attention to player input when we're uh, animating, at least animating move the movement forward. We're actually taking something which is unified for both player controlled characters and the AI characters, which is character movement velocity. So again, this is better code. Now you would ask me about this guy, which is move right axis value. You can do this with uh, some trigonometry. You can also check, you know, what is the movement side to side. But uh, the thing is that for AI movements, you don't need it because AIs will, are not strafing, at least for now. And for us, you know, for our purposes, this is fine. 
Also, one thing I wanted to mention, which is which I, I recently realized, is that we don't actually need to account for backward movement because in our current kind of awkward way of movement, uh, the guy just turns back, right? So there will never be a situation where he's strafing back. So again, this is not the best solution for fighting. You can see there are problems here when he's moving his legs in in, in unpredictable and weird direction. But as far as this, this model goes, uh, I think this is good enough for now. So again, our A now has moving legs and our animation blueprint is now more kind of unified and has slightly better code at least to handle the movement. So that's it for today's video. And of course, the next one will go further into AI logic and move our stuff to behavior trees. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.